Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending. My name is Tim Hurley. I'm with GPT. We're going to be doing a series of talks. They're going to be called Tim Talks. In today's segment of Tim Talks, we'll be talking about flange isolation and asset integrity. All right, so we've talked about $2.2 trillion per year in costs for the battle of corrosion. But it's just not about money, as most of us know. But human lives, deaths, and injuries are much more important. And unfortunately, in the 20-year period from 1997 to 2016, they were all significantly up. In addition, the cost from that 20-year period also increased over 300%. In order to fight those horrible numbers, we want to do three things, really, for asset integrity management. We want to be proactive. And what you're doing today is really going to help us. You're being proactive by listening to the best available technologies. You're also finding out things that you may not have known before that may help the fight with corrosion. Number two, identify risks. Risk and threats are continually there in our piping systems, but many of those can be eliminated through the use of proper flange isolation techniques and materials. There's also best, best available technology and specifications. Now, I'm not saying that you have to buy the most expensive product out there to be the best available technology. The best available technology is based on the application that you have. So if you have a very menial application, you don't need the best material out there. That would be the best available technology. Might be the, one of the lower commodity type products. However, if you have an oil and gas flammable application, you're going to want a higher level of protection. So you're gonna want best available technology that's at the very least fire safe. Once you've selected your material, you're going to wanna make sure that you have a strong specification written. If you don't have a strong specification, especially with oil prices being what they are today, it's very, very difficult to have contractor crews purchase the product that's been specified if you don't have a tight spec. So make sure that you don't have or equal in your specification. If you need to tap your manufacturer and have them assist you in the development of your specification so that no other materials are supplied, they can easily do that. I once saw a movie called The Little Things. They'll get you in the end. I saw it a few decades ago and it really struck home with me. It was a very graphic video this video was about Sarnia and a couple of other chemical and oil and gas facilities that had had explosions and fires. Of course, uh, human lives were lost, and they could have all been avoided if someone had just looked at the little things. And so many times we have product that we evaluate, we do forensic analysis on gaskets and kits that are sent back to us. And so many times it's just a little tiny thing that could have been changed and there wouldn't have been such, a, such an issue. So let's cover the apparent risks. Proper installation practices, such as ASME PCC1, should be used if you don't have your own manufacturer's code. If you have your manufacturer's code, that's great for gasket installation. You may want to still consult with an FIK, Flans Isolation Kit manufacturer, so that you can integrate their recommendations for installation with your current standards for installation. If you're using ASME PCC1, you'll still want to merge the two together. You want to use the correct nuts, bolts, and washers. Seems very apparent, but so many times I've seen people using the wrong washers, um, especially with FIK kits. They'll use the wrong size washers. The washer will actually interfere with the hub and they can't get enough load on the gasket. They'll use the wrong bolts. Uh, they just won't have enough yield strength for the bolt, and then they can't apply the load that they need to achieve a good seal with that gasket. The proper lubricant, it seems again, very simple, but so many times I've seen in situations where people have used the wrong lubrication on nuts and bolts. We even had an engineer that had to fly to Denmark for a failure, isolation failure. He got there, took a look at their flange, uh, within 30 seconds said, yeah, you have the wrong lubrication. They were using a conductive lubricant that had uh, nickel or, um, copper in the uh, lubrication, and those are conductive. So their flange isolation kit wasn't isolating because they had a conductive lubrication. I really strongly urge that probably only 2% of all the flange connections that you have are going to be FIKs or isolating kits. But if you have a metal-based or conductive lubricant and you are using that on 98% of your flanges, 
And then your maintenance people have to switch over to use an isolating or a non-conductive lubricant for the remaining 2%. It's too easy for them to mix it up. So I would recommend they just use a non-conductive lubricant for all their nuts and bolts. Gasket kits that meet the, the pressure, temperature, media, et cetera. There's something we call stamps. It's size, temperature, application, media, and pressure. There are six engineers at GPT dedicated just to isolation. So I recommend that if you have an application that you're unsure about, if you wanna get the right gasket, the right sleeve, the right washer, contact the manufacturer's engineering group and talk to them about it. They'll help put you in the right gasket to make sure that not only will it handle the temperature, the pressure, and the media, it's the right size. Uh, your maintenance crew will have a much easier time installing the product. Of course, it kind of goes without saying, but so many times I've seen it, flammable materials going through the pipeline need a fire-safe product. And quite frankly, about 98% of the sales of, Gar of GPT are for non-fire safe gaskets or kits, and I know that they're going into flammable applications. So if there's going to be an acid integrity program, it really needs to dictate that flammable materials have a fire safe product. Some not so apparent risks that you may run into, one is the improper compression of the gasket. So gaskets leave what are called telltales, coining, um, record grooves, so the flange serrations will leave a mark if they're properly compressed in the, in the face of the gasket. It makes it much easier for our engineers to determine whether a proper load was applied or not. Far too often, the failures that we see, over 80% of failures are due to this. People are not properly loading the gaskets. They're either not loading the gaskets all the way around the gasket properly, or they're not putting enough load to begin with on the entire gasket face. Of course, that could lead to leakage or potential blowout. Another not so apparent risk is delamination. GRE is made in laminates. So of course, a natural failure mode is going to be delamination. Delamination can occur two ways. It can occur actually at the manufacturer. A manufacturer, if they don't have the right manufacturing practices, can actually delaminate the gasket during the production of it. Water jets are used, very high pressure water jets. If the high pressure is hitting a stainless steel core, it can defray in both directions, radial directions, and delaminate the gasket. If it's not picked up in the quality program, a gasket would be received, already delaminated, and of course is going to possibly leak or blow out. A gasket could also delaminate if it doesn't have enough load. If it doesn't have enough load, combined with high pressure, internal pressure in the pipeline, you could get delamination. Both are a risk to equipment, and both can cause problems in the future. Another not so apparent risk is the seal flowing outside of the groove. Now we want the seal to flow, there's no doubt about that. We want the seal to flow into the serrations of the flange and create a good seal. We don't, however, want that seal to go beyond the groove. Once it goes beyond the groove, we start getting creep relaxation and cold flow. What that means is the load you put on that flange today isn't going to be there tomorrow. And you don't want that in a high, asset, high integrity asset pipeline. You want to put load on that flange and you want to make sure that that same load is maintained. The only way you can do that is to have a gasket that has zero creep relaxation and a gasket that has a seal protruding and flowing above the groove is not going to have zero creep relaxation. Another not so apparent risk, uh, I touched on it earlier, is a washer that's too large. So if the washer is too large, during the installation process, the washer is going to interfere with the hub of the flange. You're never going to put enough load on the gasket to achieve a good seal. A second not so apparent uh, problem or a risk would be holidays in the washer. If the washer is not produced properly, it may have holidays. If it has holidays, you're not going to get isolation. And remember, it only takes one washer to cause a problem with a kit. Another issue could be with the sleeves. So we're hitting the whole isolation kit at this point. If the sleeve lengths aren't the correct length, you can have problems. If the sleeve length is too short, you're going to have a gap. In that gap, we're going to have a conductive material accumulate. Never fails. If the sleeve is too long, during the installation process, 
It's A, going to rob you of load that should be transferred to the gasket, and B, it could crack the sleeve. If it cracks the sleeve, it's going to allow moisture to collect inside the sleeve, thus losing isolation. Another not so apparent risk, and I'm surprised that we've even seen it, but we do, uh, some manufacturers will actually put their labels over the seal. So the seal is intended to seal, but it can't seal if it's not contacting the flange because a label is sitting between it and the flange. Another th issue that I've seen, and it's just careless manufacturing, is a manufacturer, um, you have to put an adhesive below the seal to hold the seal in the groove. So if you've got the adhesive in the groove, but you have too much adhesive, what's going to happen during the process, the adhesive is going to flow outside the groove. Once it's not contained in the groove anymore and it hardens, you've got a problem because instead of the flange loading that seal, what's going to happen is the hardened glue is going to prevent the flange from coming down on that seal. So you're going to have a leak or a potential blowout. Our goal as a manufacturer is really to make life simple for everyone. We want simple installations. We don't want failures. We don't want any additional costs of operation. We want your assets to maintain high integrity. You've got to purchase, again, the best available technology. You've got to, you've got to make some effort. I talked about being proactive. You have to go and talk to manufacturers. You have to watch videos like this to determine what kind of risks are out there, what kind of threats are there to my flange connection. Garlock is developing a program, Garlock Pipeline Technologies, GPT, is developing a program where we are going to be doing certification for installation training. We've had a customer advisory board and talked to a number of people about things that they'd like to see from us in the future. And one of the things they wanted to see was an installation program where their own personnel and their contractors could be trained and certified so that they know that those people are installing the FIKs absolutely the way they should be installed to maintain the integrity of that pipeline. We've also developed a checklist of things that you could do to make sure that everything has been taken care of on the risk side. So this is effectively a risk assessment uh, baked into a checklist. When you go through, it's going to have a checklist on installation, uh, the proper bolt selection, et cetera. All you need to do is have someone during the installation process check this off. By the time they're done checking it off, you should have a great flange connection, no issues. You don't have human injury, you don't have human death, and your costs are reduced. So thank you very much. Let's get corrosion before it gets us.